In this video, I'm basically going to teach people what a, Swift, a switch statement is, right? And a switch statement is essentially just a neater, sort of more convenient way of doing an if, uh, if, else, if, else uh, kind of block, right? And let's imagine, for example, well, first of all, you need a variable, right? You need a variable used to compare to. So we're going to use the variable equals number one, right? And we're going to say switch num1. So what we're saying here is compare number one to all the following. We then put our curly uh, brackets or curly braces. I don't know what these are actually called. I'm sure someone will tell me. Okay, so we, we've made our variable, which is number one, a value 99. And this switch statement here, this keyword switch starts a switch statement. And we use a variable. This time the variable is going to be number one, value 99. And we're saying use this variable here and compare the value to the values given in the following, right? We give a case, and our case is essentially an if or an else if um, sort of statement. Except instead of saying if or else if, we just put, you know, a number or a value. So we put case and then value, right? And we say case 97. So what we're saying here is, Compare number one to every single case. So compare number one, which is value 99, to this case. If this is equal to this, then do this. Okay. So whatever comes after this colon here, the program will do um, if the number or the value of the case is the same as the value of the variable. So this here won't execute because 97 is not equal to number one, which is 99, right? So if it did work, we would print out num1 is equal to 97, okay? We can also have case uh, 58. We can have any number we want. And again, we print out num1 is equal to let's say 58 yeah because it is 58 and then we'll say we'll have the third case and we'll say 99 right and then we'll print out num1 is equal to 99 right we also or at least in uh, xcode 10 depends on the version of swift that you're on right you have to provide a default value. So this is essentially, oops, this is essentially an else uh, statement, right? So you can consider these as if or else if statements, and you can consider this default as an else statement. So basically this default says, if none of the things above are true, then do this. So we're just gonna print num1 cannot be verified at this moment right simple enough now when we run this we'll actually get case 99 and you can see that it prints out that num1 is equal to 99 right that was all quite large probably didn't make full sense so i'll explain it again you have to use a variable and then you use the keyword switch with a variable right and then this says I want to compare this variable to all of these things here. These individual cases are basically if and else if statements. And the default here is basically an else statement, right? Once num1 matches one of these cases, if it matches one of these cases, then whatever the case, you know, dictates after the colon is what will get executed. So for example, if the case were true that 97 and number one are the same, then the stuff after the colon would be executed or the code after the colon will be executed. So here, this print statement where it says number one is equal to 97, this would have been executed. You can see here that in this whole code block, the only thing that's executed is this, this case 99, where number one is equal to 99, right? You'll also note that the default wasn't executed. The switch is really quite similar to an if, else, if, else statement in that 
the first item that is true is the only item uh, that is executed or the only statement that is true or the first statement that is true is the only one executed I'll prove this with another switch so we'll say switch number one and I'll show you a neat little thing as well and we'll say case um, 99 92 right you see how I've got a comma here separating two values what this says is if this is true or this is true then do the thing after the colon yeah so execute the code after the colon and we're going to print num1 is equal to 99 or to 92 right we're going to say case 99 which is also true and we'll print num1 is equal to 99 simple enough and then we have to have a default or at least i'll have to have a default on this one uh, because i think it's uh, xcode 10 or something like that it's a more more recent version of swift basically and we'll just put num1 not known or what whatever or not not 99 or 92 it doesn't really matter when we run this we get num1 is equal to 99 or 92 right now this case is true because the comma indicates that it can be this or this and then this will happen right so what it's saying is in the case that number one is equal to 99 or 92 then after the colon execute this code which is print num1 is equal to 99 or 92 as has already been stated once one of these cases has been determined to be true or the first one that's determined to be true will be the only one that runs so even though this second case here is true that number one is equal to 99 it, it this code doesn't get run it doesn't get printed instead only this code gets printed and the reason that only this code gets printed is because you know only one of these cases uh, will ever be you know executed the code will only be executed once so let's imagine that these cases aren't true in fact let's not imagine let's just make a switch statement with number one where none of the cases are true okay let's say case 88 and we just print 88 okay let's say case 10 or 306 right and we'll print 10 or 306 quite simple neither of these two cases are correct and we'll stick the default and the default will print this is default okay if we run this all again we get this is default what this shows is that one of these cases or the default must always run in a switch statement and in more recent um versions of swift all switch all switch uh, statements need to have a default statement within them right and what that means is at least one case or default has to run um, if these cases aren't true then the default will run and this shows that the default is essentially just the same as an else statement if an in an if else or an if else if else statement uh, block sorry so yeah that's that's really all there is to these switch statements they're essentially just like a shorthand way of making you know if else or if statements or if else if else code blocks you know they're just it's just an alternative neater way to doing that because as you can see here instead of having loads of curly brackets that i can't see what they're associated to there's only one set of curly brackets here and i can see all of the cases that are associated to those curly brackets whereas if i actually do an if statement or an if else statement I, I first do the if statement with curly brackets after it, then an else if, and then another else if. And it's very confusing, whereas this is a neater, more shorthand way of doing it. Now, 
I've got a few things to critique with this. Um, it can all be done with an if statement or if else statement. So I'm not sure why they have swift switch statements and if else if and else uh, statements on in in the Swift programming languages. I really don't know that. I guess this is just like an alternative way. Like I said, it's it's kind of a neater way of doing things. And here, look, instead of using an or statement or using several all i've got to do is add commas and i can get hundreds of cases on one line or maybe not hundreds maybe let's say 20 cases on one line something like that right so that's kind of useful kind of more useful than an if statement but as you can see here i'm a little bit limited as to what i can use you can actually compare like greater than and whatever but it doesn't work in the traditional sense so what i mean by that is switch number one we'll just make another switch statement here and we'll say case more than 10 right print and one is more than 10 okay and we'll just go to default and um you know just just try and guess what this will actually uh what this will actually accomplish, right? Try and imagine what's going to happen when I run this code. I get an error, right? I get an error. I get a bloody error. Why do I get an error? So I'm just going to comment all of this out just so that I don't get that error. And I'll show you why I got an error. Or I'll try to attempt to reason why I got an error. So basically, Switch statements just cannot handle direct comparison operators for some reason, which you'd say, you know, this maybe makes them inferior to if, else, if statements or what, whatever, right? But they actually can handle these uh, compar comparisons. You've just got to do it in a totally different way. You actually have to make um, a bunch of, and I'll show you, a bunch of constants it's, it's really strange but you've got to make constants by the way this more or less concludes the uh, which lesson this is just a little side note so we're gonna use number one and we're gonna say case let V where V is more than 10 okay and we're just gonna print num1 is more than 10 very simple very simple okay we'll put a default doesn't matter what the default is and we'll print oops we'll print default okay run this num1 is more than 10 now i'll explain what happened here Basically, for some strange reason, Swift has been made in a, in a way that you can't directly use a, a greater than or a less than or a comparison statement. You know, you can only use like an exact number. However, you can compare with a constant that's less than or more that has a comparison operator, right? So I can say I have a constant where the constant value is always less is always more than 10. So I don't know if that means V is just more than 10 in general and somehow Swift applies that logic or B is equal to all numbers above 10 to infinity. It must just be applying the logic because it would run out of like memory storage, right? But for some reason, it allows you to use a let statement V where V is more than uh, to do something. So for example, I can make another switch statement. I can do switch number one again. And I can say case let v where v is less than um, one. We'll say print num one is less than one. Or we can just have a default here, and we'll say the default just prints default d. Okay. Oops. What happens when I do that? It just prints default because 
number one isn't equal to less than one but basically we can get you know a variable put, put like a variable name here and it's like a temporary variable that's that's made inside of the switch statement and we can say where variable comparison operator value so we could say where variable whatever comparison it could be more than or not equal to and then we put the value so here i put where v is less than one now i could substitute v here or here for any any like any variable name I want, I could call it Viking, I could call it V7, V800, I could call it whatever I want, right? But I have to call it the same name on both sides, right? Here I've got a, an operator, and I could use more than here, I could use not equal to, or I could use equals equals. And then I've got the value 1 here, that could be any numerical value, or even, you know, like a string value, right? But for whatever reason switch statements don't allow you to operate directly like this very strange but yeah you can basically use a switch statement in the same way you can use an if else if or else statement but it's just if you look at it it's just a heck of a lot neater it's a lot easier to see what you're doing and yeah even though at first it may seem like hold on i can't co compare yeah you actually can do comparisons as i've demonstrated so I'll just go over these core concepts again. So first off, we create a variable. And then after assigning the variable a value, it could be a number, could be you know, a string or whatever. You then use the keyword switch to bring up a switch statement. And then you use the variable name, right? And what that's saying is make a switch statement with the value from the variable name. So 99 and then every case compare the value of this with every case presented and if this is the same as the case the value of the case presented then do the execute the code inside of the case now here you can see i've actually tabbed um, the print statement so you can see you don't have to do that you know it's it's not that kind of programming language where you have to do that i've just done that because yeah, it looks better you know so here for example because number one's equal to 99 where case 99 is we would get this code executed so it would print number one is equal to 99 which is printed here if none of these statements were true then the default would be print would be uh, run so this code number one cannot be verified at this moment is what would be printed okay your code can be whatever you like it doesn't have to be this another thing to remember is the first case that's true is the one that will be the, the code from that case is the code that will be executed none of the rest of the code will be and in this sense the first case is an if statement and the second case in any case is beyond the first day are else if statements and the default is an else statement in a sense right in that sense we can think of a switch as a more elegant way of doing like uh, if blocks of any kind, if, else, if, if, uh, else, if, else, or just if statements, right? Again, you'll see here, we use the variable, we compare it to various things. In this case, here, the first case, you can actually use all without using all. So you just say, I want to compare it to 99 and we want to compare it to 92. If number one is the val has the value of 99 on number two, execute this code, right? Quite simple. And you can see that code is executed because it is equal to 99, right? On this third switch statement, this is default is printed out because neither of these are true. What you'll notice is if your switch statement has done been done right and it has a default, something within the switch statement will always execute, right? In this sense, at the very least, the switch statement is an if-else, right? It's an if-else block. Um, in older versions of Swift, it doesn't need this default, but it's it's sort of better to put it in. And here, I demonstrate that even though at first, here, it appears that you can't uh, use comparison operators, uh, you know, such as more than or less than or whatever, 
you you actually can you just can't use them directly like this you have to put them uh, into some kind of temporary constant okay and then you have to use the keyword where in them and it's the formula of case let constant yeah let constant oops what have i done there let constant where constant is more than or less than or equals equals value and that's it okay so here we said compare number one to a constant that is more than 10 any constant that is more than 10 and if number one is of any of those values of 10 to infinity that is above 10 then do this and essentially because 999 is more than 10 we end up executing this where it says num1 is more than 10 here we've done the same thing but we said less than one okay and that's it yeah so basically switch maintenance just just tidy versions of if else and if else if else blocks and that's it anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoy